Okay, welcome guys and girls to my next Oberon tutorial and now we're gonna hack. For the first time we're gonna hack. And it's a tiny little and very interesting project I made for an introduction dealing with Oberon. At first, of course, I uh, was inclined to use the normally uh, <coughs> to normally um, use um, Hello World program but I think it's by the time it's so boring I think there's an internet page existing where Hello World programs from all programming languages are listed and it's really it's it's quite easy to implement on Hello World and Oberon but it's also very boring let's do something different okay so we want to hack and hack means hacking means also doing something with the hardware. One of my purposes in Oberon is to establish uh, some kind of domestic control through the uh, parallel port of the system, the printer port, because it's very easy to pull out data um, from the data port and also getting in data is, is very easy when you can deal with um, normal port in and port out commands like you are used to in assembler for example. And this here is my hardware hack. You can see this is a green LED with a one kilo ohm resistor in series and it's connected to this 25 pin um, sub D connector. And the anode of the LED is connected to pin 2. This is the data output D0 of the parallel port and uh, the cathode is uh, soldered to pin 18, which is ground. So, I'm going to pull the plug in. Okay, and now I'm going to show you the program I wrote and I want to uh, show you um, line by line. The first you can see here is the way you are putting commands into Oberon source code. You know commands is a, a to Z of um, a good programming style because you have to tell a possible reader of your source code what you intended to do. And um, commands uh, are placed the same way you're maybe used to in Turbo Pascal. So you open a parenthesis, a round parenthesis, and you place an asterisk to open a command and you close, um, <coughs> close the command also with an asterisk and the closing round parenthesis. So, um, here you can see something that I implemented that is not compiled, but um, in fact this is my development environment system. As I told you, you can place Oberon commands wherever you want, in, in any text you like. So I place the compiler commands and the, um, some other stuff here into um, Oberon commands, so that means the compiler is skipping all those um, all those blocks here, <coughs> but my Oberon parser, when I want to compile or unload the program, I can start from here by clicking with the middle mouse button on it. I'm going to show you this in um, a few minutes. So these development utilities here are for compiling. Compiling with the extension slash s means compiling and generating a new symbol file. A new symbol file you always need when uh, the interface of your program changes. Namely when you have new functions or new variables you are exporting. Um, in this case the compiler claims to recompile um, the whole file with slash s extension. As yes, you can see here, we have uh, this little sign characters here, uh, those wave characters here, uh, showed you in my previous videos. So these are commands, um, compile for example, that can deal with a whole lot of um, different modules compiled to be at the same time. And to tell the compiler where the end of parameter list is, you need this wave sign. System free means that you unload the program again. 
Because the way um, a program comes uh, into action, gets kicked into action after compilation is, the compiled module is uh, stored on the file system. And when you invoke the command, for example here in the system log window, by typing in and clicking on it, then it's loaded into the memory and executed. And when uh, the program is terminated again, it uh, stays in the memory area. And um, that means that the next time you invoke it, it's uh, very much quicker in action than the way uh, in, in you uh, made it in the, in the first invocement. Um, this is also a small issue when you are changing the program and you recompile it, then recompiled, your change, uh, recompiled module is in the file system and it's not loaded in the memory. So when you start the program once again, it started from the memory and this is your old version and not the new version from the file system. So you have to unload it first. And this is the command system free. So I wrote your system free LPT mod. LPT is the name of my module I've written here. This is very important. Always when you when you change something in your uh, in the module you compiled, did you unload the uh, module from the memory? These here are test functions. Um, here the exported functions can be invoked: the function test, the function all high, the function all low, and the function blink. You will see what they what they do um, a little later. And this here utility area uh, with a backup module. These are functions to store the files on floppy disk. Okay, I'm going to explain you now how the module is organized. A module in Auburn always starts with the keyword module and the name of the module, which is LPT. <coughs> and then you have to declare which other modules you need to import to get this module up and running and I need this module system, kernel and out. Then you have a, an area where you can um, specify constants. You see different constants here um, with hexadecimal, hexadecimal values. The first is MDA base. This is um, in fact the, the base address of the um, parallel uh, port for the old MDA cards. These, these were sound cards that also implemented a parallel port. This was um, a design very much in the past of the first personal computers and it's now it isn't present anymore. LPT1 base is a normal base you have in, in old computer systems with this uh, address of the of the parallel port and if you have a second parallel port installed it will take this address 208. First address is 308 hexadecimal. Okay then we have some specification of constants for um, uh, for the register offsets because the um, um, parallel port takes three registers a data port and control port and um, a status port. It's a different register, so we have different offsets. Varm means uh, variable area. We have only one variable here, LPT base, which is an integer, 32-bit integer. The type declaration here is not so important. I will skip this for the moment. And here comes the area with the procedures. The first procedure I have is named read. And you can see this small asterisk here. This is a very important uh, thing you have to obey. If you write a function and you want to export it later, then you have to use this asterisk. The asterisk is not a pointer definition like you are used to in, in C, for example. It means that this function or this variable is going to be exported, so it's visible for uh, other, uh, other modules. Okay, this function takes a parameter, an address offset, which is an integer, and then also returns an integer. So we have this uh, this column here and um, the variable specification integer, the base type, uh, which is returned. Then we have your internal um, variable which is named byte. So 
Now we take advantage of a function which is built in the, the kernel module named system port in. System port in uh, does really what it says, so what you see is what you get. Um, you take the um, the address of the of the port you want to read out as a parameter, and the variable you want to get uh, the the value in is also part uh, of the parameter list. And when the function is executed, the result is returned in value. And this is also what we return in our function. We return odd value. And odd value means value is a character because we are dealing with eight uh, bit um, variables, namely a byte. And a byte in, in Oberon is, uh, at the first sight, it's a character. And the odd command um, changes the character to its byte value. For example, if you have a character, um, a small written A, then you, for example, have an ordinal value of 65, something like that. So this is a character byte conversion. You can see it like this. Then. Okay, then we have a, a second function here named put data, also exported. It has more or less the same interface. You take an address <coughs> as an integer and you take um, you take the data you want to um, put out of the, the COM port. And um, this is uh, this is here is, a, is an if conditional to ensure that the data cannot be bigger than 256 to prevent um, the port function from overrun. And um, the, the byte value is changed into character and then pulled out of the COM port, uh, uh, the, the parallel port. Okay, and then we have some more functions that are based on those um, first functions we created here. Um, you can put all the port pins high or you can put all the port pins low. And there's a second function using this previously defined functions to let the LED blink. And this takes uh, use of the kernel function dealing with a timer to get a time base for the blinking uh, cycle. Okay, um, and also implemented a function named test. This is trying to put data in the COM port and read it back again to see if the COM port is, uh, to see if the parallel port is really present. Or if it's not there, you can see that the return values are always zero and um, then you know there's no parallel port behind. Okay, and after all the declaration of those procedures, every module has a has a part of code that's going to be executed every time it is loaded. Here the only thing that happens is that the base address, LPT1 base, 0378 uh, hexadecimal, is assigned to our integer variable LPT base. Okay, so the module is already compiled and now I have to switch my camera angle a little bit so you can see uh, you can see the LED. We go up to the top of the document and I say LPT blink and you can see it's blinking. And here the system log you can see the outputs of the of the primitive functions. Yeah, okay. Well, I think I accidentally closed the document because now my edit window is, is, is gone. But that was my fault. Okay, um, but you could see um, that it's working. So we had done our first Oberon program and we have not done a very boring simple hello world. We have done a real hardware hack um, 
and we we could afford to let an LED blink and I think that's a very good approach um, to go further with our next tutorial. Okay, bye for now.